Now, it's time for today's perspective on the programme. And I'm going to start uh, by quoting for you now from the website of Michal Ivanovsky. He's a Polish photographer based in Cardiff in Wales in the UK. Here we go. In 2008, I came across small graffiti in my neighbourhood in Cardiff and it spelt go home Polish. I dwelt on it for a while, unsure whether I really should be going anywhere or whether I was already at home. In 2016, with the Brexit referendum breaking Britain in half and the rising wave of nationalism sweeping across Europe, the slogan took on an even darker tone and I felt compelled to. So in April 2018, I set off on a 1,900 kilometre journey on foot between my two homes, Wales and Poland, with a British passport in one hand and a Polish one in the other. I drew a straight line on the map, got a good pair of hiking shoes and walked out of my Cardiff flat facing east. Wales, England, France, Belgium, Holland, Germany, Czech Republic, Poland. My goal to ask people about home in a journey that would take 105 days to complete. Well, as you can see, Michelle Ivanovsky is joining me uh, now from Cardiff. Thanks very much for being with us. I mean, it's quite emotional reading that. Um, I mean, with Brexit on the way, can you kind of remember how you were feeling in Wales with your, your Polish and British passport as you saw that graffiti? Um, I would say a little challenged and a bit confused because, like I said, I was already feeling I was at home. So um, to be reminded by an anonymous person that you actually know, uh, maybe not welcome as, 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 as much as you thought. It was quite um, quite upsetting, but again, I had to dwell on it for a couple of years, um, actually 10 years to be honest, uh, before I made the project that we're talking about now. So as an artist, did you then think, how can I um, put these feelings, if you like, into an artistic project? Was that your, your initial thought? Yes, um, I'm quite um, communicative as a person, so so I was uh, finding ways in which I could actually um, deal with this kind of question because I know it only doesn't deal only with my, my situation, but so many other people from Europe live in Britain, and I wasn't even thinking about Polish uh, group in particular, but generally people who are not from here, you know, whatever that means, you know, we all from somewhere down the line, but um i was looking for a way to to um talk about this uh slogan and it took me a good 10 years and with the referendum actually was the catalyst of um of the decision to actually take the slogan literally and and go home you know did that make it worse do you think the referendum um well, I'm more urgent, I would say, because in, 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 I feel like as an artist, it's my job to, to uh, communicate um, in difficult times like these and to relate to other people and to actually uh, uh, disseminate the positive message that I'm, I have on my mind. But uh, referendum was definitely a catalyst for it. And, and um, well, before I was still feeling kind of safe and and comfortable in Britain after the Brexit referendum with the wave of um, xenophobic messages sent out and written on walls, I knew that it was time to react because we mustn't tolerate language uh, of that kind in any situation. And is that continuing or, or perhaps even getting worse? I mean, bearing in mind what's been seen in the UK over the last few months with the, some would say, debacle going on in, in Parliament there and the anger on both sides, has that made the racism even worse, would you say? No, it's, it's very difficult for me to say personally because I haven't experienced it on a personal level, apart from, from the graffiti on the wall. But I do read uh, reports and, and the increase in, in uh, hate crime after the referendum was, was, no, was uh, extraordinary. And people would laminate uh, cards and post them through uh, immigrants' doors, telling them to start packing and going home and putting them behind uh, windscreens uh, in the cars. So it's definitely a uh, massive increase and uh, referendum did allow a channel for people who before maybe felt a little bit, uh, you know, constrained, but suddenly had this megaphone through which you could scream whatever you wanted, you know. That was um, the nasty side of Brexit, that it opened that um, channel of hatred. Let's talk about your photographs now. We've been um, seeing some of them appearing uh, as you've been talking there. I mean, they're quite fun, aren't they? You, you, it looks like you enjoyed um, the, the projects as you went along. Absolutely. I mean, it's an exploration of the land and, and uh, on a ground level, as the common denominator, I believe all of us have the same planet as home. So for me, uh, making this journey was almost reconnecting with something much bigger than administration, much bigger than Britain, much bigger than Poland or Europe, because, you know, 
fundamentally, we all own this planet in equal measure. So for me, it was going, go, claiming this land as mine, regardless of which uh, nationality, which country I was crossing. The land is exactly the same for all of us. And um, it was quite playful in many ways. And um, reenacting certain situations and conversations that I had with people along the way, people would tell me their stories and I would, I would uh, find them quite symbolic and interesting. So I would um, um, act them out in the landscape just to show exactly the stories of, of people and that we all belong here the same way, you know? And listening to what you're saying there, how concerned are you about other countries as well? I mean, of course, the, the UK and the situation there, particularly as a Polish person, obviously there are many, many thousands of Polish people living in the UK, but we've also got rising nationalism in other countries as well. I mean, just thinking of, of the US, Italy, Hungary, just to name just a few. Yeah, Poland, you know, most of all, which is um, the scariest, I'd say. Um, like I have very little interest in, in national pride as a person. I really see see myself as part of something much bigger. So um, it was very important for me to actually present this positive message in my project because it was a reaction to the news feed that we read. There's always these umbrella terms: Poles, Germans, immigrants. We we never are individuals. And and for me, it was very important to present this one very. Uh, you know, uh, particular uh, immigrant, Michał Ivanovsky, because I have this, you know, <laughs> this is the body that I have, this is the life that I have, and by presenting it as a, you know, as an individual story, I was hoping that people actually would stop using such big umbrella terms, you know, like Polish, go home, or Czech, go home, whatever that is, because we mustn't use that kind of language, you know, we're all individuals, and we all have uh, context, mm -hmm. With which we come, you know? And just finally, very, very briefly, if you can, I mean, once Brexit occurs, assuming it occurs, um, presumably you're planning to, to stay and carry on your life there in Cardiff and, and hope very much that, uh, you know, you'll be accepted for, for what you are and who you are. Well, I should hope so. I love Cardiff and I've lived here for 20, nearly 20 years and uh, this is the home that I've chosen. You know, as a British citizen, I don't foresee any, any kind of problems. And... I'm sure that I, I still have the accent that, you know, uh, gives away that I wasn't born here. But it's not a problem for me. I'm at peace, you know, with uh, my position within this community. It's quite, quite uh, welcoming and, and uh, I'm hoping it will remain the same. But at the same time, I'm open to you know, just seeing where we go as, you know, as a community. Michal Levinowski, thanks very much for uh, talking to us today from Cardiff. Enjoyed your pictures as well. So uh, I'm glad the art project went so well. Thanks for being with us on the programme.